Hey guys, a new year is full of possibilities, but when your e-commerce business is dealing with gift returns, late deliveries, and a mountain of customer emails, you can feel stuck. So don't wait any longer and make the new year your best year and grow your business with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash wide open and sign up today for a 60-day free trial. That's ShipStation.com slash wide open. Let's get into the podcast. Mm. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> Damn, I missed you guys. I missed you too, Mike. And I also missed like the subscribers. Taking a week off was wonderful, but... I mean, like we were reading the comments from the recap video, but it was it's it's nice to read. It comments felt like a week. it felt like longer in a week. It felt like a month, honestly. I saw all the comments. People were like, "When are you gonna post again?" I was like, "Jesus, it's only been like seven <laughs> days." But a small handful of those people were outraged. Yeah, dude, being away from the camera and just not being like filmed and like kind of having to like think of what you're gonna say. As soon as me and Ryan opened up the last video when we were filming the R6 after the first cut. We, me and Ryan both look at each other and go, <laughs> man, that felt good. <laughs> it yeah. did. That dude, felt I was like, good. Oh, it we're like good to be back, back into it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I feel that. When, when I was on, when we were on vacation together in Florida, it was, uh, it was kind of hard on me, honestly. Like I was having fun for like four days and I was enjoying it. But I think maybe halfway through the fourth day, I was like, all right, like I'm kind of ready to get back to like doing something progressive here. Back into the swing of things. Ben, something I feel like, yeah, sure. Ben I feel told like, me the same thing. I feel like Ben and CJ are incapable of taking a break. I'm proud of you guys for making it four days and having fun. But I feel like after that, like, you guys just get bored. Well, it was fun, yeah. but we also, like, also didn't do anything. That was the main problem with drank. the vacation. It was like, that's what I was like, why? I never used to get tired of vacationing when I was with, like, my family. I was like, oh, yeah, it's because we went to, like see things and do things and other than just like walking from the hotel to the beach bar to the beach yeah. home. Yeah, we like kind of fucked up there. We should have just done more than that. And and like, don't take this the wrong way because that looked like a blast. That looks like a time that I would enjoy. But after, like, let's say after seeing snaps for like four days of you guys kind of looking exactly what you just described, walking around, drinking like heavily, um, I was like, okay, I'm not. I didn't go to preface that. Uh, I'm not missing out like terribly right now. No, no you yeah. really didn't. It, and I really would tell didn't. you the total opposite, not to make you feel bad, but when they both go, no, you didn't miss out on vacation. It wasn't fun. It was, it was a blast. It was fun. It yeah. was no, no, one no. of the most fun weeks I had all year. Amazing. I really enjoyed it. And I felt like I recouped so much energy that we expel constantly. It Mental was so energy. nice. Yes. It was so nice to have a day where you wake up and you like didn't have to talk you didn't have to work you didn't have to do anything you just could go to the beach lay down and sleep it was beautiful felt so good the first four days were the quick recharge and after that it was like you know when you charge a phone and it gets 80 percent real fast and then the last 20 percent takes longer that's what the the next three days were for me i feel like mm. and uh, on the complete opposite side of things mike how was it staying back and working and working <laughs> it was fine like obviously i, I was working at like half pace i was chilling Crushing a lot of personal projects. But <laughs> what were you going to say? Half Dude, days has got to be pretty like slow. So that I sounds came, like vacation for yeah. you, though. It, it's like it, your no, dream. It, it totally was. So, I mean, you guys laughed, and I was like, well, I'm still on vacation. So I'm still going to treat this like vacation. It, uh, mm -hmm. So I didn't go with to Idaho to do the snowmobiling, which I had major FOMO once I saw the R6 because that wasn't completed before we left. So I didn't – if I would have yeah, saw never, that, I yeah. would have been like, I'm going to Idaho. Mm. I thought it was going to be another snowmobiling video, which realistically, I didn't know how much value I'd add. So I was like, eh, I'm going to go back home, try to do some stuff there. When you're at the shop, just you, it's so peaceful. It's so <laughs> peaceful. It's really? so peaceful. I really love it. What about the large one? Wasn't he here with you? He was, but he locks himself in his in his room <laughs> or his office. And sometimes he was here. How well, you come he out here, here, the pinball Well, Ken clacking. wasn't here for a while, too, because he stayed back in Florida. Mm. Why was it peaceful? What were you, like? What was going on? You know, you just show up. You kind of like could show up at any time, and you just—it's just nice. You had the whole place to yourself, and it was quiet. Not that I mind you guys being <laughs> loud, but it was just there was something peaceful about it. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's that. the idea of of nobody's gonna show up, and you're immediately gonna have to like start doing something, mm -hmm. or like you're waiting for somebody else. Yeah, like, I was on, on anyone else's on time. time. I was yeah. on anyone else's time, which was nice. Because there's just such a long list of tasks that we all have, or they could pop up at a any time. Anyone could walk yeah. in the door and be like, "Hey, we got to do this," and we're like, "Oh shoot, got to do it." Yeah, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time at home, and then we went to Idaho, so I still got a little vacay. Alex like got really mad at me. Not really mad. I shouldn't say she didn't get mad. She just she got a little bit frustrated with me because I believe it was on like the fourth day. Mm -hmm. We were like, 
going to bed and I was like, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> and she was just like, what? You know, she was like mad that I was kind of bored, but I was like, I'm just used to like doing more stuff than this, mm-hmm. you know? That you, your trip was still like kind of domesticated. Like you're used to like literally like having to walk out on the beach and make content like the one time we did in yeah. Florida. But this, yeah, now it's It's a lot more like, enjoyable when you like go out to eat and like get some drinks and stuff when you feel like you kind of earned it rather than just like you didn't do shit all day <laughs> yeah. and now you're just like sitting True. there drinking. Like it's just like, damn. Man, we crushed some drinks though. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Holy shit. Ben, dude. you kind of were on a rampage that one night. Same night as me, but <laughs> you, know, you, yeah, were on, yeah. you were on a worse rampage than any. I mean, I, I didn't really see it. Cause I, I, I keep hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just heard about it. it. Yeah. I keep hearing that too. I broke my phone that night. I keep hearing that too. I don't really know what I did that was on a rampage, but like I have not stopped hearing about it. Could you guys describe it on the podcast a little bit about what he did? It's they kind of, don't have any examples of what I did besides for I yelled robo this, dick at dinner. This is Ben's uh, embarrassing a, drinking story for the clips channel here. <laughs> so we're at like a decent pretty nice crab restaurant bro and ben ben shows up already for the three sheets of the row. wind and you, you went know, to one of those pre games didn't you dude i was on vacation i was having yeah. a good time god as you should hey. as it's, you should it's, it's kind of like when you know everyone else in the restaurants on one level you know there's the general restaurant volume no. see why do you shake your head like you because know because we you didn't went even know you weren't even blacked out we went and then three nights in a row you and just immediately dismiss him let him speak and you were the one blacked out here comes ben you know at the bar, <laughs> one thirty a.m. Screaming volume, and it's just like. But what got, time was it? It was seven p.m. It was like <laughs> six, seven o'clock. What was I doing at this moment? Because I felt bad because we showed up late to meet up with you guys that day, and Ben was so drunk. I was like, I can't let my cousin be this drunk alone. Thank you. So I started drinking with him and this random dude. That was telling I mean, security were, guard stories. You to were us. slurring your words, but you weren't no, like you were out of control. You were pretty chill. Like you were actually ben quiet. Was out that, of control. that was the quietest I've heard you speak drunk in a long time. <laughs> I think because you were self conscious about it, you knew. So keep going on. And now, then, what was Ben doing? So, <laughs> CJ loves this. There's a uh, a family of children behind us. As the ben, whole family was children. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's young like you know family, the, the, parent, the parents were at young. one table, the kids were at another. Okay. They were also subscribers. Nope. This is a different family. <laughs> different just bunch of kids and I don't ben know if starts, that makes it better ben though. starts screaming the robo dick story which is hilarious I had to get the word it's out a, it's the most viral story I, I just saw it on tiktok today four million views some random kid clipped it I was trying to get the word out doing god's work right dude just trying to save the kids oh. i guess <sighs> okay is there volume for this um, Jesus, I, Ken, you I, look kind of fucked up, man. Oh, what? Oh, 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 whoa, 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 look at that camera roll. And then there's Ben screaming about robo dicks in this restaurant as we're okay. in the corner. I'm like, Ben, you got to know your place about telling these stories. Don't just scream it at the top of your lungs in a family restaurant. I don't remember screaming it at the top of my lungs, but I do remember talking to somebody on the other side of the table, and I guess I must have been... Overtone. Do you remember when Overtoned. you stood on top of the table? Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. So I was I was actually talking to Evan about this last night because on the last night of the Idaho trip, uh, Evan got so wine drunk. I have <laughs> never seen Evan this liquored up, and I've seen Evan liquored up. And he, he ordered two massive bottles of wine. We'll pop up the video right here. And must have deleted, like, one of them himself. Anyway, <laughs> got so drunk running around and he was having a good time and I'm not going to shame him like Ken is trying to do to me for getting super wasted. But the next day he, I was like, Ev dude last night. And he was like, no, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. He had like anxiety about it. And I was like, bro, I know how you feel and I'm not going to make you feel like shit for not being able to remember what you did. Cause I've been there, bro. And I was just there the other night and I didn't like it. My favorite story part about that story. Uh, we're all kind of liquored up. He's just way beyond us though. And we get back, shenanigans happening all over. He's taking his pants off. He's running around. He's just saying outlandish shit, just <laughs> falling over. It was so I, funny. Just outing him. And then, so keep in mind, we have to leave. Pants at like, were off? His at, pants were off. At some, <laughs> Deleted. At some points, yeah. 
And I don't uh, know why. we had to leave at like four thirty or be up at like four fifteen. So I'm morning. So I'm like, I gotta stay up the whole right, time, right? You, yeah. And then Evan's like, I got it too. And I'm like, no way you make it. But we both did. We both stayed up the whole time. So keep in mind there's like a stint of two hours where he was just going nutty. Then we make it to the, <laughs> we're like hanging in the bedroom, just like chilling, trying Pants to still tr- off? Not pants stayed <laughs> on. Okay. But I think his shirt came off at some point. Really? Yeah. And uh he Literally, we get in the car. So this is like two hours after he was being a maniac. We get in the car, and then we're like telling him, and he's just like, what? (laughs) Like, I can't out him on all the things he did, but like, he's like, what? I'm like, Evan, that was like two and a half hours ago. (laughs) It was just such a weird thing that he did. He did so much crazy shit, and then (laughs) just didn't remember it, and then came back to two hours later, and he's like, we got to leave now? (laughs) Yeah, wine drunk is like just a different... Brings out a different animal in him. Mm-hmm. I've never seen such a thing. It was extraordinary. It was extremely entertaining, though. Yeah, it was. He was a m- Before podcasts now, we're like, hey, F, uh, have a bottle of wine. <laughs> 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 we're all <laughs> drinking, sitting up here drinking wine. No, it was a good time, though. It was a good little reset, for sure. It, dude, there's something to be said about working together and doing everything, like, every single day together. And then when we go on vacation, we're like, let's all go on vacation together, mm-hmm. too, <laughs> and just spend more time together. And it, it actually worked out pretty well. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, when you're all in the fun. same mood and the same, like, trajectory, you're like, we're on vacation. We're going to go have fun. We're yeah. going to have fun together for sure. That was fun, just to preface. I'm I'm, I'm happy to be back at it working, mm-hmm. but I'm gl- also glad we went and did that. I was yeah. just saying, like, I'm very recharge. happy to be home and, and back at it, making videos, podcasts, it, and... Uh, it does. If I, It had been 15 days since I was at the shop. By the time this was all said and done with, of course, the week in Idaho and pulling back up to the shop, it was like this overwhelming feeling of I'm home. Felt so good. I love it here. That was probably the longest I've gone without seeing. It was like 10 days for you and I, but the longest I've gone without seeing you and Ken. Yeah. Yeah. 15 days. Just in like the last, like since I've known you guys, probably the longest I've ever gone without seeing you. So Ryan, you you slept with Ben. One night in Florida. Yeah, we had different beds, though. <laughs> I had to sleep with Ben one night in Florida. In the same bed? How do you the same bed. With Ben in different <laughs> okay. beds. Well, here we go. <laughs> Ken loves just out. And Let's hear that. Well, what the fuck did you do, Ben? What do you <laughs> mean? I don't know. I was drunk for one story, and now I'm sleeping for the other. <laughs> Pretty much out of control for both. So, so Ryan, what, what else did I do? Ryan, you've got a video when he slept with you. But oh, I, I do. I'll pop it up. He giggles. In his so I, unsolicited. Right. It was I, I, went to, I went to bed. He, Him and Ryan kept drinking outside. And I wake up and, and ready to we tore it up. It's like four or five o'clock in the morning, and I wake up to. Up. <laughs> 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 He's like Fuck bolt upright, just giggling. Oh my God. Oh, he was bed. upright. I was sitting yeah. upright. Ken yeah. was probably oh, thinking. Ken was probably thinking, "This is it. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's, He's really gonna kill me this time." <laughs> and then oh eventually, you just lay back down, and then probably thirty minutes later, I wake up. You're just grabbing my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what? What, Ben? <laughs> ben. <laughs> And I was what? like, Ben, get the fuck away. <laughs> I love Ken's feet. When he did that, he grabbed your ass? Ben, I don't remember that. Oh, you, wait, he grabbed you like this? No, oh, I was like, like he, he was fucking he grabbing was a whole bone handful. grabbing no, it. Good hold no, of it. No chance. Oh my no gosh, chance. Dude. There's a good chance. <laughs> There's a good chance. I had to slap you away a couple. Like, it wasn't just Get once. It was me. like two or three Get times. Off me. Stop it. Stop it. Can't resist those cheeks, Ken. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, jeez. Man, did you feel violated? I felt extremely uncomfortable and violated. I don't think I slept the whole night. <laughs> Ken went to the police station, filed a report, but then he retracted it right at, like shortly after. What were you like afternoon. afraid of? Were you were you <laughs> were you awake so much because you were afraid of it happening again? He just kept doing things so frequently, and it's like I'm about to fall asleep, and then he just does something else. Oh, <laughs> what else did he do? Well, he giggled a couple times, and then he grabbed my ass. Just no trust. I think he was awake. <laughs> And then by the time I, if he I think he was away. By the time he finally stopped doing stuff, the sun was coming up. He was just laughing. <laughs> Stop doing stuff. Ken's once like, oh, once I finally settled well, down, it's Ken's a victim moving. of the night. I better just go rip some coffee. That's crazy. Before man. Ben touches my ass again. Uncomf- <laughs> it was an uncomfortable night. I'm sorry, Ken. I actually really am. I had no control over that. And I'm sorry. I don't really have anything else to oh, say. It's, it's funny looking back. But he it's, probably thought but it's in the moment like Greta. It was terrible. I did. I probably thought you were Greta. Couldn't resist those cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> he like starts feeling in his face. Go, oh, Greta, you're a little hairy. <laughs> I haven't shaved lately. Ooh. Um, 
What did I do when you when uh, when we were in the same room? Just the one time you giggled. Oh. And I like th- I had my phone out because I couldn't sleep, and so I got the end of it. It was pretty funny. Okay, all right. But it was okay. I didn't. I slept. All right. Well, enough about me. Yes. <laughs> as much as I would love to continue to embarrass myself, somebody else want to step up. That's all we got. Fuck. <laughs> Dude, the Robo Dick story. Speaking of, has been kind of popping off. It's going viral in in its own sense. It's our number one clip, and then also today. Just come across this random account that reposted it as a TikTok, 4 million views. Let me tell you, it's been a tough time for me. It's been a trying time. Oh, really? really? Well, you start talking shit on vapors, <laughs> you got half the population now that's going to disagree with you. They're not going to want to hear that shit. No. And then sure. the other half thinks it's it's awesome. They think it's funny. So now it's like I got one half just like, hell yeah, CJ, that was so funny. And then the other half like... I really think CJ needs to get off the podcast. He is just, <laughs> he's not that good on it anymore. Yada, yada. I'm like, Jesus. So, like, is there it's kind of funny. Is there anything you'd like to say to the vapors out there? Hey, man, I, I know it's tough to hear, but I'm just looking out for you. Ken, I'm just looking out for you, man. Oh, don't look, look at Evan. Don't look at me. Bro, Ken You can't hates. deflect onto someone that's not even here. Yeah. Ken He's hates. one of your robot dick brothers. Jesus, you gonna take your own dick out now? <laughs> Ken hates the Robo Dick story more than anything else. Mostly because it involves his two least favorite things: dicks and robots making fun of vaping. Yeah, yeah. Two things he's passionate. So about. I've I've recently inquired even more haters after that story went viral. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. You were anticipating the half and half, or you you've already seen it. You've seen the comments. Like, are you getting? No, attacked? I saw the comments. Yeah, but I mean, it only makes sense. Did you read the TikTok comments? No. Mm-mm. So TikTok is either. like known for just being extremely violent in oh, the comments section. What are they right? saying about me? So I was like, oh boy, here we go. And uh, like the top comment was like, "We should start a podcast." In quotes, because <laughs> I just pictured like just like some random group of friends that. Doesn't do YouTube or something like that, but they're like, yo, I think we talk about some funny shit. We should start a podcast. And then that's like the first topic. <laughs> They'd be doing pretty good then if they went, if they had to. I mean, oh, shit, it took the, us 61 the, podcasts. The comment had 35,000 likes. Nice. Yeah. So is that, wow. you think that's negative towards me or that neutral, comment? positive? That's I neutral. Okay. I don't know. I, I took uh, I'd the, say a little on the negative side, but it's mostly, probably more as a whole group. And then there's like a lot of comments underneath it that were like, oh, you haven't like seen their podcast or like th- that's C-Boys. They're like YouTubers. And a lot of people are like, who are they? <laughs> and they were like, they have like 2 million subscribers on YouTube. And they're like, well, they must not be doing that good. I've never heard of them. And then other people like, really? Like it was it's like going back and forth, going yeah, back and forth. Amazing. And I was like, man, it, it's so interesting to see these people in the comment section, how passionate they are on both ends of the spectrum mm-hmm. of like having our back and then people that could care less just like going after us. Yeah, it is, funny. It, it is very entertaining to read though. I think there's like two general things that every male friend group does when they hang out. And the first one is we should start a podcast. And the second one is we should open a bar. Every male group of friends has had that discussion and went, We are so funny. People should listen to us. And then the next, when they start drinking, they go, we could open a really good bar. uh, Well, that list can go on a long ways, actually, but it's like group of friends. Hey, guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, what are you doing still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year, and as the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. Mint Mobile got my new year start off right by saving money where I don't need to spend it. I'm paying less than half of what I used to before I switched to Mint Mobile. And by going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes those significant savings on to you, and all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And I know what you're thinking. It's going to be a pain to switch over. You're going to lose your number. You're going to have to get a new phone. But Mint Mobile makes it easy. All you have to do is pop in a new SIM card and you're good to go. Everything switches over. They ship it to you. It's easy. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get your plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash wide open. That's mintmobile.com slash wide open. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash wide open. 
when buying online, you know the importance of getting your order quickly. And if you have your own online business, you know just how tough it can be to process and fulfill those orders quickly, especially during the holidays. And a new year is full of new possibilities, but when your e-commerce business is dealing with gift returns, late deliveries, and a mountain of customer emails, you can feel stuck. ShipStation helps you get there faster, whether you run a side hustle or a giant warehouse, keep customers happy, and fulfill more orders than ever, all while cutting shipping costs and managing it all from a single dashboard. And their best rates in the industry just got even better with up to 86% off USPS and and UPS rates. It's not a question of if you should switch to ShipStation, but why you haven't already. And uh, running a business can be stressful, but using ShipStation has taken so much stress out of our fulfillment process. We started using ShipStation a few years ago on a free trial, and we haven't looked back since. Uh, it sped up our shipping and uh, made printing labels painless. If you guys have ever gotten an order from Seaboys TV in the last like six years, you've gotten it from Big Ken using ShipStation. So don't wait any longer and make the new year your best year and grow your business with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash wide open today and sign up for a free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com slash wide open. Let's get into the podcast. We should like roll around in a limo <laughs> like us. Yeah, but not that many people have limos. That's true, but not that many people own bars. I haven't yeah. met a single other group of friends. Actually, I, there's no, one. I've, yeah, but I've been, I haven't I've, met anyone else that owns a limo. No, 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 no. I haven't met anyone else like that a owns a limo. Friend, There's a lot of group friend that groups that say we should start a podcast that never do. Probably mm, most of them. There's a lot of friend groups saying. that say we should. And then there's a lot of friend groups that say we should get a limo. I'm trying to think of more examples. But, like, you know, I'm sure every group of guys could positively be affected by a limo. Dude, every friend group Absolutely. does need a limo, yeah. though, actually. The hard part, then, is finding a limo driver. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Of, of a friend that and is... And somewhere to put it. Wants to be oh, dude, those and things are long. It. The limo is a cheap part. You can buy an old limo like we have for 5 7 k yeah, Our we, first one was 30, 3500 bucks. Yeah, yeah, we've said that before. If you pulled your money up, you can actually yeah. get your hands on a limo. But it's just then you mm-hmm. got to store it and uh, keep the mice out and also find a driver. <laughs> yeah. We even got Mark and Tint, our two buddies. They're in on our limo yep. with us. Well, I mean, right. they were riding with it. They were riding yeah. with us in it, so it only makes sense. Um... I think we should get a sprinter van. Yes. 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 I think that I would love be that so idea. sick. But don't sell the SEMA truck, get a sprinter van. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I think we should do one more good video with the I SEMA truck because I know we got some ideas. I'm not gonna spill them. But uh I think that we should get like a, a Steve Will Do It style, though. Like it's nice. Like it's a big TV in there. It's like sick. And uh we roll around in that if we like go places. But the only problem I can see is like Oftentimes we go off roading. So it's like not necessarily off roading, but like you drive through a field. You go, you know, places that I'm curious if that sprinter van would really let's just get a up. let's just get a big one. Like and I think lift they it up four wheel. That'd be fucking they make, if they our make sprinter diesel, van was on a diesel lift sprinters and, and with some like thirty threes on it. Yeah. I don't know if we need a dually. Dooley. It's going to ride like shit. It's going to be rough. Well, I'm just saying, I think you can get a pretty beefed up but sprinter. But I, I think, yeah, that the reason they are dualies is because there's so much stuff yeah, in them. That's yeah, true. They're heavy. It's probably so heavy. like four recliners in them and shit. I think we should find one. Do not they, not a really, really expensive one because that's a lot Yeah, of dude, money, the sky's the limit with those things. Dude, those it's things really, are, yeah. some of them are way too expensive. But there's just something just nice. Let's all be in together. Decent. I, although it will be, we're going to have to start drawing straws for drivers. Like, I typically like to drive. Because I probably have like a weird control issue where I only feel safe when I'm driving. No offense. But uh, I might actually want to sit in the back of that one. <laughs> no offense. Well, well dude, I just because you guys would be driving. I found uh, Ben and Ryan flew to uh, Idaho and mm-hmm. Evan and I and Cody drove. I, I'm i not like, I'm going to drive every time now. But I have newfound love for it. Because yeah, I drove most bad. of it. And it went way faster. That mm-hmm. is like a true thing. Like you're driving, it goes way faster. I don't know what it is on road trips. Like, yeah, you can do a little work. Yeah, you can scroll Instagram or TikTok or Netflix for a while. But even after a little bit, if your trip's like 16 hours, you like run out of just yeah, like phone and yeah, things just you can do. things to do. And then you end up just kind of like sitting there. Do you think that we could get a Sprinter van and be able to pull our snowmobile trailer? Mm, no, no, I was looking not at that. Honestly, one. with how... Many times, like going up hills, our ram starts chugging. I don't think so. Damn, that'd be sick. That would be that would be very nice. We could get a semi. Did you guys yeah, you see? Just get the sleepers. Or it's coming through Bear Jackson this week, I believe, and it is a it's a semi with a limo, and it has three bars. It's like a full blown semi truck it, thing. It looks it's, like a saloon. Like yeah, you're it's walking a into a saloon, but it's a semi trailer that you ride around in. And in what? the inside, there's what? three bars. Yes, Ken, yeah. could you please what? look it up? Three bars. 
Could you? DJ's gonna start crying. He's, he's <laughs> so excited. It's, it's called the. Uh, it's like a full blown <laughs> semi trailer. Why three bars in a semi? How I many bars know. you need from here to there? <laughs> well, it's just. Is three it like a areas. like a pop up shop? Like it's no, like it's, it's like a deliverable exclusive. Well, I'm sure uh, you could rent it out. Like not a pop up shop. Like exclusive. Like you would you would go in there with your high end buddies. And the Shit. only you can't sleep in there. Like the only thing you can do, do is chill and it, drink and smoke cigars. And How much? Oh, there she is. Look at that thing, dude. Beauty. Beauty. It's Midnight like Rider. Wow. They got three bars in there? A limousine trailer. Look at that. What? There's one bar. And then there's the... Oh, it has like a booth in the a back. A limo part. That's beautiful. Two, yeah, hold up. Did two I see 2.5 million? million? Oh, my goodness, dude. No it, uh, it actually set a Guinness World Record for the biggest limo. Biggest limo? Yeah. Because it's 70 feet long. How is that a limo? It's being pulled by a semi. I know I was a little bit confused. By I don't that know too. what the definition lie, of limo is, but how is that a limo? By definition, a limousine or limo for short is a large chauffeur driven luxury vehicle. <laughs> Fuck well, it. Should we buy it? You, no, <laughs> I, it's really funny you just said that. I like looked at it. I just was like, yep, yeah, that. We're gonna put that in the don't need section. Cool, <laughs> but don't need. Yeah, yeah who's buying? Who's buying who's this? Buying that? It grows the economy. Dude, there's no way that goes for 2.5 mil. Unless like, like it's Elvis way too used to drive around in that, ride around in that thing. 2.5 million? You got really love boozing. You yeah, got really, really yeah. love boozing. I mean, you can buy a, like a jet for that, right? Yeah. yeah. Probably. I'd rather have that than a large old Peterbilt. But like, so <laughs> is our Bear Jackson auctions like cool to go to? I'd assume they're they're. I think so. Relatively think so. entertaining, but like I've heard some people that are like, once you go, like we go every year, it's insane. I think just it'd be a, a lot of fun. I yeah. don't know if we'd be filming there. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I don't know for us, but like, I mean, if you're just a major car enthusiast, like yeah. I mean, you just watch it go through. But I'm, there's other stuff going on. I'm sure. I'm, I bet you it's just basically like a. I know you can walk through the staging area, so it's basically a gigantic car show. Yeah. And they're, of course, and all the cars all being are sold. mint. And, yeah, they come through the auction. I'm assuming most people don't buy things because they go for crazy money. I feel like buying things at auction, you're either going to get a really good deal or you're going to just continue to just get, like, outbid yeah. and it's going to just up the price more mm -hmm. and more and more. And then pretty soon you're buying a vehicle for $50,000 worth more than it is. And then you're like, why did I do that? Right, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> the adrenaline like, of the auction. Yeah, so yeah. I wonder if, if the auction just capitalizes on these people being in the moment. Well, totally. I think that's the thing is like, if you're selling a car and you send it to auction, there's a 50% chance that it goes for more than what you wanted it for, and there's also a 50% chance that it goes for way less. And I feel like that's kind of the thing. You just hope that you get two people that really want your rig. Otherwise, you're going to send your rig that you love so much and then no one bids on it and gets it really cheap i wonder if we could do an auction we have enough stuff for it we could do like an estate sale you know like all farmers talk about like my four-hour auction when you know they're done or whatever and you just spread all your shit out in the yard and just everything's for sale my grandpa did that yeah. my can grandpa you, did one too can you imagine we don't do any online consulting or anything we do an auction and it's just all in person like we like put up like it has to be in person and some guy comes out hey, blah, 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 and then <laughs> and lit. it'd be it'd be pretty fun no like, it'd be I, a lot more fun than selling stuff online. yeah so i was like that'd be way more entertaining because like it's, I know, it tells me if we had enough cool stuff it would be pretty fun right but what were you saying sorry like how yeah like throttle just did it with a bunch of their cars and you just go on you bid for them it's pretty hmm. cool you can buy a car that you've been watching on youtube for a while or whatever but i like now you, you talk me into having a live the guy live pulling show. around on the trailer, <laughs> yeah, on the tree, yeah. yeah, in the little box up there. Gosh, I wish I could do that. All the, I take that back. I don't, I don't wish I could auctioneer and talk. It now, would be kind of a fun. Though. It would be fun party a little trick. party trick. Now that I think about it, I don't know if we have anything that's worth money to people. I mean, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. that. We're, that's worth sell that we want to sell. No, I, mean, I do. Like what? All my cars. My oh, dirt really? Bike, oh, my you would jet sell ski? Them? No, no, oh. I don't want to sell them. Oh, I was picturing like the things that we would be willing to let go. Right, right. And we'd throw up like just some broken pit bike. <laughs> yeah, it's like pit bike plastics <laughs> like, and stuff like that. Yeah, we are going to do a booth at Heydays. Uh, Evan and I figured out Slim is going to sell all of our parts. That, yeah, late. that's money. We yeah. have yeah. so much parts that we take off vehicles that, yeah. To destroy our And we're just, and we're cutting them in another snowmobile. <laughs> 
I I actually would really like to get auction access. You know, like you can bid on uh, like Mannheim auctions and stuff like that. And yeah. I see them in like the car groups that I'm in. They're like, here's a preview of what's rolling through Mannheim this week. And it'll be cool cars. And you know that they're going for less than retail. And I really, really want access for that. But you have to have a dealership license. In order to have a dealership license, you have to have a dealership. And you have to have an LSE. And you have to have a location. You have to have all this stuff. So I really just want someone to let me use their auction access mm. or we become a dealer or that it's it's like a lot Lord there's a we got lot of lot of work really the, yeah it's not an easy thing you have to have be insured and bonded mm. like you literally put i think depending on what type of vehicle you're you're gonna sell you have to like just put 60 grand in the limbo for as like insurance in case there's like some type of thing you have to have a certain sized sign dedicated storefront Oh. storefront facilities like a dedicated bathroom a dedicated showroom a dedicated office like it mm. we would literally have to create a dealership a dealership what i did not is that all minnesota that that mm -hmm. north dakota is pretty similar and then people are like what? we'll just hit up the uh the uh public auctions those aren't any good i mean they're yeah right. i want the dealer one. yeah yeah they're, what about they're not like the corner dealerships that don't have that well if you look at like where they i bought do. my hummer He's got a big sign. He's got his own dedicated shop. It's got an office. It's got a bathroom. It's got a workspace. He's got a stupid clientele. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, dude. How's Ryan just put wheels on his Hummer, bro, and it looks flipping amazing. What do you mean, how's it going? He's wearing a Hummer sweatshirt. He's clearly yeah, pretty proud, pretty bro. Good. <laughs> okay, well, he'll pop a picture up right here. He put, like, big old black wheels on it, and they're, like, 13 and 5 wide. Looks amazing. Yeah, it's a good rig now. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just, just needed wheels. wheels. It's a good just rig wheels. Now, bro. All the problems before. He put the, the wheels door. on and the rear stopped. The rear <laughs> suspension stopped leaking. The brakes started working. Uh, the brakes still. The don't motor work. stopped knocking. <laughs> uh, motor knocks a little. You bit. didn't have Sizzlers fix the brakes. No, it was. Good. He wanted to like put a whole new system in. It was going to be like twelve hundred bucks. Ah, that's twelve percent of the vehicle. Yeah. Precisely. And I know Dude. you guys love to just belittle me for buying this cheap car because I don't have as nice a <laughs> stuff as you. No, we're, we're not. not. We're you not. Put, you literally put on the Snapchat, polishing a turd. <laughs> <laughs> like no, it's him. just I don't know, dude. I saved so much fucking money driving this car for the five months that I have to drive it. It does just fine. I drive nowhere. But I don't need to spend all the money on another car. I'm going to next year. I'm gonna buy a nice truck. No, 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 no. But we're, I, that's not the point. That's we're not belittling you. We're just we're just, just making a joke. Much money. I know it's, it's just a constant funny. joke. Funny. No, it's just funny. It's just a constant it's, joke. It's, just it's not funny to me. Broken though. It's just like no, it so isn't. Many I literally have not. Not driven it like one time because it was broken. Driven it, I've driven it every day getting home. Right? And I'm gonna. I can't I completely agree with that, but I I do want to say we're not making fun of you because it's because uh, it's not expensive or it's not nice or whatever. It's just more so funny that like you got it and it just like has caused so many problems. I think mm. it's like, and it's not like major issues, obviously. So it's like kind of funny to like, yeah, <laughs> just watch. No, no. it's, it's also funny, funny that it's a Hummer, I think. Yeah, that's why I but got it. Yeah, I'm exactly. just wondering, because CJ really wanted a Hummer I too. Did. And at one point an H2, <laughs> and I'm like, I wanted learned. exactly <laughs> Ryan has. No yeah, lesson learned. But I was like, would he be getting the flack? <laughs> I, I don't know if he'd have cool well, Hummer. Well, it depends if like mine that, was breaking like his, I suppose. And and knowing you, it wouldn't. You would have spent twenty five k on a minty, minty one. Yeah. And I rode in. I, I rode in one like that, and I still was like, this thing seems like it's gonna give me a lot of trouble. So I didn't oh, he was it. gonna. Ryan was gonna sell it to Siege. No, not Damn, him, dude. <laughs> I was so close. Yeah. Now we've <laughs> talked one of my vehicles into the dirt so much. See, that, I won't oh, be able that's, to sell that's, it. that's 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 what gotta be I was gonna say. These are Ryan's least favorite topics on the podcast because now any buyer is gonna. Just you gotta come say back to you this. did say that one day. I came down after editing. You were like, "The brakes, they're shot." Yeah. They no, told me how much it's gonna be. I don't give a fuck. I'm, let's just fucking flip it that's over with the, the skid steer. That's yeah, the no, only I'm, time that you I'm were... I'm definitely still down to You do were that. mad about it. I and fucking I, no, I'm I still like, am mad that at sucks, it. sucks, but it was just more so funny, dude. And up until that point... I think that, that point, is awesome that you did it. Yeah. I, I love it. I made an awesome bit when Vasily stole it in the race, too. I think it's great. Right after you bought it, it's amazing. Fucking Vas, dude. Made way more content than Ben's truck. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to do. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm and I'm not hundred. making fun of you for it. I'm just bringing the situation to light and just <laughs> in laughing. a comedic tone. And well, I'm just laughing with the boys and I'm trying to make something out <laughs> of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, that is good. At least at least we've uh, gotten some good subjects out of it. And I got this cool crew neck from someone. There you go. Who gave you that? Some dude who runs a vintage shop. No shit, he just sent it to you or what? Mm-hmm. That's pretty nice lit. Yeah. I it's like some, it. It's even the classic Hummer yellow. Yeah. yeah, it was made the same year as my Hummer. No shit. Some of our like subscribers are in, <laughs> are like insane for that. Like, so I just got a Venmo while we were gone for five hundred bucks. Whoa. What? What? For Whoa. he's like to figure out your Suron problems. Laughing face, laughing face. He no Venmoed shit. you? Yeah. What? Whoa. And so I was, I Venmoed it back. I'm not gonna take that. <laughs> I Venmoed it back, and I was like, dude, that that made my day. Like, that's so funny. And then he was like, you should come to Utah snowmobiling. Then you, like, responded to it. But anyway, Bro, I'm like, somebody $500? $500? Yeah. Damn, that was really nice. Like, out of the wow. blue, it wasn't like, do you actually want, like, help with it or something? Like, just out of the blue, 500 bucks. So, yeah, I mean, I Venmoed it back to him, but I was just taken away by that yeah i would if have been he was too serious yeah that pops that's up. amazing yeah i get requests from people yeah i get that yeah i yeah, bought I some get... kid a case of beer one time that's nice so same nice. yeah, yeah. oh maybe it was the same no, kid. hopefully not dude. <laughs> yeah. i got yeah. that same request and i didn't respond to it i was going to respond if you can't afford beer you probably should go get a job or something <laughs> like that you, be you probably it. shouldn't be drinking it you should just go he, he just responds, get back to work well ben and ryan just paid me 40 bucks so I, I didn't. I didn't respond that, but I thought about it. Mm. I just left it. So, so speaking of taking the cheap way out, uh, CJ, how'd that go for booking a cheap hotel room in Florida? <laughs> what do you mean the cheap way out? That's exactly what I mean. Taking the cheap way out <laughs> of, of booking the cheapest hotel on the beach. Oh, <laughs> well. First off, I thought we were staying on the beach, and it was not a cheap hotel. It was still very <laughs> expensive. But it was just cheaper than where Ken was staying. And supposedly, Ryan was going to stay there, too. I kind of feel bad about this because I feel like I misled you. You said, this is where we're staying. I didn't look in any further. I said, great. We'll stay there, too. Because then Alex and Alondra are at least close by. They can hang out, whatever. Ryan ends up not staying there. So we show up, and we're staying at this hotel. And honestly, <laughs> as like I never went on vacations. I only went on one vacation growing up. We I went to Disney World. We only went to Disney World. Like, and then the only time I've ever really traveled around and like seen stuff or like gone different places was filming with us, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and Ken books all the hotels. I don't mm-hmm. really care. We stay in shitty ones, we stay in nice ones. <laughs> I just show up. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I, I show don't up by I, sleep. I yeah, I really don't care. In my mind, usually I'm, you kind of deal with it because it's like, well, Ken booked it and clearly Ken ain't, ain't booking yeah, us. Yeah, but us very rarely do options. we. Rare, very rarely do we ever even like care. Like, I mean, no, exactly. You know. But usually we're just like, yeah, we're just here to film. Yeah, we're here. So, I mean, yeah. it's supposed to be this big vacation. I thought we were staying at a resort on the beach, as it was on the beach, and in my opinion, it was expensive. Yeah. Well, we show up, and uh, also I need to preface one one more thing. My girlfriend traveled a lot around, done a lot of very nice vacations. Same with Ben's. Yes. And uh, he dealt with kind of the same thing that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, anyways, we show up. We check in the hotel. I could kind of tell, like, she was, like, looking around at first. <laughs> Where's and the I'm, rest? like, checking in. Where's the rest? You know? And then, yeah. like, uh, we go and go to the room. And, like, I was looking at the pictures. I didn't think the pictures were that bad. I thought it was fine. But, I mean, I will say they misled on the pictures. It was probably built in the 60s, the hotel. And it's on the beach. So you'd think like it's a fucking beach hotel. It's gotta be nice. Yep. And hey fellas, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, True Classic, and the old year with a new you in clothes. It'll give you the confidence to tackle those 2023 resolutions. Thanks to our sponsor, True Classic. You'll have everything you need to hit the gym or get you ready to go out. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men look great in their tees, and now you can say big while you do so. For a limited time, only get 25% off with the code CBOYS at trueclassic.com. Finding a shirt that makes me feel comfortable and looks good on me is one of my least favorite things to do when getting ready. They either fit too boxy and square or they're too tight and are just super uncomfortable to wear. True Classic is my go-to shirt when I'm going out with my friends or with my girlfriend because when you look good, you feel good. 
And True Classic will make you feel your best by accentuating the places the eyes go to first. These tees taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter on the chest and shoulders. They give you the wide-shouldered and tapered bottom look that we're all looking for. From going to the gym to your first date, there's no better look than a fresh tee. The best part is True Classic also has a 100% risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. The response to these tees are overwhelmingly positive with over 200,000 five-star reviews. It's no wonder that these shirts are quickly becoming men's go-to. So go get 25% off at trueclassic.com with code CBOYS. That's 25% off with code CBOYS. Plus free shipping included on all purchases over 100 bucks. New year, new me, and new tees. Thanks to True Classic. Hear that? That's your sign to finally forget about those run-of-the-mill resolutions and instead start your own New Year's revolution by starting to sell on Shopify. Shopify is the e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're selling your own new top-secret hot sauce or your custom-made tie-down straps, Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business. Shopify covers every sales channel from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. and It even lets you sell across social media marketplaces places like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Shopify gives you complete control of your business and your brand without having to learn any new skills in design or code. And thanks to 24-7 help and an extensive business course library, Shopify is there to help support your business success every step of the way. Shopify helped us take cboystv.com to the next level. We were able to design a website that was easy to use and most importantly, still look good and fit our brand. And uh, the best part is is we did it ourselves and we didn't have to pay a website designer thousands. So everybody, now it's your turn to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash wide open, which is all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash wide open to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash wide open. But it just maybe hadn't been very updated since then. Yep. (laughs) So we go walking over, and I'm like, well, at least we're going to be in this courtyard. Like, uh, There's like a pool and stuff. We're on the back side. Okay. We're on the oh. back side. We got to walk through this like dark little tunnel to get to our room. And it's on the back side, like motel style. There's cars parked out in front of our door. There's like, ah. like kind of just some like grimier people sitting outside, like maybe walking by. And like I open up the door. We get in, and I'm like, okay, it's not great. I wasn't, like, happy about it, but also I wasn't, like, whatever. Or I wasn't, like, mad. You were the one that booked it, so you're dealing with the cars that... Yep. Yeah, yeah, right, you know. right. And then right. I could just tell yeah. immediately from my girlfriend's face, she was not pleased. Uh-huh. She was not pleased. And I was, like... Not a oh, good way crap. to start out a vacation. I'm looking around. She wasn't very happy, whatever. And uh, we end up, like, going and meeting up with, with uh, Ryan and Alondra. At later on, and uh, you could just tell she was not very happy about the room. Mm-hmm. And I will say, but it wasn't you really weren't either. Let's say I, like I really were, wasn't. But l- 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 so if it was just me staying there, I would have just like, wrote it out. Yep, I would have just whatever. But being that she was with me, and I wanted her to have a good time, uh, it was a problem now. Mm-hmm. And also, it's like it was it was kind of sketchy in the fact that I couldn't be like maybe out on the beach, be like, yeah. You need to go back to the yeah, room. Go true. ahead. Like I couldn't just send her on her own, which almost ruined my time too. So we have to go through this whole fiasco of changing the room. She wanted a new room, and I was like, "Okay, yeah." So, got to get out of the room. Can't get out of the room. Already paid for it. It's through the airline. Yada yada. It's like seventeen hundred bucks, or maybe more. Mm. I don't even fucking know. And uh, the people are just being douchebags to me. I'm like, I went down. I'm trying to solve this. I'm like, yo, like, can we get out of this room? Can we get a refund? They did not want to work with us. And uh, moral story is, end up booking the hotel next next door <laughs> that Ben and his girlfriend were staying at. Didn't cheap out. It was still, it was still well, kind of, you were the hey, you ask, hey, you ask, still a shithole. If, if you ask your girlfriend <laughs> and my girlfriend, maybe you, we still che- cheaped out. Well, the issue is you're spending like 450 bucks a night yeah, yeah. for you a were, shitty hotel. Do you have shitty hotel. Fucking, do you and have I'm to, like, okay, 450 bucks a night be realistic or... Here. 800 bucks a yeah, night to stay that. at where Ken was staying. Well, I see, paid 350 When we walked in, well, Ken's working is at all of his angles with his 15 different fucking credit cards and he's getting all these discounts when, and these kickbacks. Oh, I don't have those. And I, I don't know how you get these deals on these hotels, Ken, but. You have the exact same access to stuff I do. You have the exact same credit card. Okay, well, I didn't get those deals. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't find, maybe, maybe I just didn't find those deals and I wasn't down to spend 800 well, bucks. Well, I should have just. 
paid that because I ended up probably doing that because I'm still waiting on the refund from these fucking mm. cheapskates. Oh, over there. really? Dude, con artist. Over the, at Allegiant. So I go to the door, the one next probably door, and back. I was like, fuck. Because we walked in that one. She goes, I thought we were staying at the one Ken was staying at. Oh. I was like, God damn it. That was said, never well, in the cars, baby. <laughs> how about this one? And, uh, you know, she was fine with it. Dude. And, and we stay in this room. We, we Basically, we end up switching three rooms in the course of seven days. Two of them were in the same hotel because we got put next to the bar, which was super loud. I thought it would be nice to be next to the bar. She didn't like that. Mm. So we went to the other side. Is and I'm not I I'm not trying to say Alex was being difficult because realistically it was I think any of the girlfriends would have thought uh, the first place yeah wasn't right and and it was it wasn't even a matter of it being shitty it, for me the changing point was just like it wasn't really safe and I couldn't just have her go back by herself mm-hmm. like when, you can't just have this cute little blonde girl walking around by herself type of thing when me and Greta got into our hotel room I knew immediately how it was gonna go. Like before I even got, I saw the outside of the hotel and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> and, and the whole time I'm like checking in and Greta's kind of looking around. Yeah, and shit, you, you already know? felt it. You like know, I can feel it. And we get, we're like walking in and I like put my key and open the door and I'm like, holy shit, this is nice. <laughs> I did that too. This when we is went in. nice. I said, now this is nice, isn't it, baby? I'm Look like, at this. I'm like it's looking like, at like just the couch. Come, I'm like, oh my God. I didn't even know we got a couch. And I'm like, I'm like taking my phone out, filming thing. it. I'm like, well, I can't wait to show I the did boys the this same room. Thing. Oh wait, wait! And I was Greta's trying to make like, it. I was hyping it up. I don't think he was though, or were you? That'd be so much funnier if you weren't hyping it up. You were just like decent place. I actually thought it was pretty yeah. decent. I, it was but I decent. Knew, I knew okay. that Greta was kind of leaning was, the other way, so I was really leaning. The I thought other it was way. decent too. I was just trying to upsell it and really yeah. persuade her. And they're like, look at uh, yeah. I'm like going in the bathroom. I'm like, shish. Big shower. Nice. <laughs> Taking videos of the whole thing. Oh, I can't wait to flex on the boys with this one. <laughs> I just love like, it. It's like really? a blatant, it's almost like a blatant <laughs> lie. Yeah, she's like, are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? I don't see why hotel rooms really matter. I don't know. It's just like you just go there and you just sleep in them anyways. As I, long as it's safe, which I agree, first one wasn't safe. And also when we, the first one, when you close the fucking door, you'd see the light coming around the fucking edges of the door oh, like yeah. it was just like open like wind blowing it was pretty shitty dude you know what it, it is this, this is what it is nice vacation this is what it was out apparently no it was the vegas trip ken got us the bougiest hotel the bougiest rooms in the vegas trip and then we go on this one with our girlfriends and then we put them in just a dump and they're like are you fucking kidding me like that came up multiple Shit times. Shit was expensive, it was dude. And I, and I was you like, spend two hold nights up. there. It's damn near the mortgage of my house. Yeah, dude. I, but I was like, hold up. Ken booked the Vegas trip on the company card, and I had no say in it. And they're like, well, oh, so this was actually. And a honestly, I bet the, I had it with your Vegas girlfriend hotel too. Was not much more expensive. Than those hotel the rooms. I those were over. very expensive hotel rooms. And I believe that Florida's really living off of that. Love Florida. Really do. But they're just living off of being shitty. But people just love going there because it's in America. And there isn't a cartel war going on. And so they just charge a ton of money yeah. for a crappy place. You That's go to Cancun for like 200 bucks a night, all inclusive. You got to fly to Cancun, though. Yeah. You're, you're spending that risk. much money on a hotel room. You'd think it would be fucking nice. I agree. Or so I didn't least. I didn't bother like digging in. I was just like, we're staying here. It's right next door to Ken's. So yeah. what I did was Ryan I looked Andres at the hotel center. reviews. Well, you're the travel agent, Ken. So from now on, I yeah, booked one is- hotel in my whole life. One hotel I've ever booked. And it was, I mean, the whole thing was a disaster. I was constantly <laughs> having to switch rooms. It was just fucking. I felt bad. That I was so excited. We are sitting on the beach and you guys took a long time. We're like, oh, great. They must <laughs> be having be fun. Soon. You know, all that. And oh, you guys, come, I could see instantly CJ's face was like, thinking he's like how am i gonna fix this like that's yeah, what you, I, did. I, well, yeah, you weren't mad up, you weren't doing nothing to... like that but you were like i am gonna fix this i'm gonna do my job and fix yeah. it and i was like "Ooh, something's going on <laughs> yeah i did i fixed it dude that's, you did that's kind of funny that you said like that's the first hotel room you've ever booked because i haven't i've booked probably like three times and one of them was just when we were, evan cody and i were headed out uh, <laughs> i heard about this yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> so yeah like uh i didn't i don't know where to start cheapest one's the best one right yeah. not not but then i go up sleeping. a little bit there. Who okay, cares? so there's like six sixty five dollar night ones, and I was like, okay, just go up to like, and I went, I got a room for like ninety five bucks. I don't know if that it's probably pretty cheap, but I, it's the days in and the super eights and all that. Those are now bought by like mostly Wyndham and mm, just like mm-hmm. bigger. 
So I think that tricks people into thinking that they're nicer. Now, you know, days in by Wyndham. Oh, yeah, it's got to be halfway decent. It No, it's just a days in that's rotting away. <laughs> like, <laughs> And yeah, we went in. It was fine, but it was crusty, man. Like, I mean, you guys would, you guys would all walk in and go... What is this? There was like a little blood stain on the sheets. Okay, so that, yeah, there's, 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 toilet, toilet, there's toilet. Toilet. Evan, stain Evan on the toilet. still has not stopped talking about how he shitty was, of a hotel he was really was pretty yeah. torn up about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised. Like Evan, when he worked his best, he used to stay in some nasty places, yeah. and and that's what he said. This is about caliber of those. So I don't know why. I just personally don't see why hotel rooms really, really matter. It's not like we went on vacation, go sit in the hotel room. You're just there from I'm maybe really, yeah ten o'clock to. 8 o'clock in the morning as or maybe even clean. 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning. You know, it's just like, who cares? As long as it's, it's somewhat clean. And the bed's <laughs> half decent. I think yeah. I think the bed and the shower is really where I like to have. And the shower is even iffy, but the yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah. I if guess you have the a comfy bed, bed, then you're good. But it anyway, isn't. Moral of the story. You know moral of the story. Ken's booking our shit from now yes. on. I'm going back to that. That's why I tried he it. is our travel agent. It's not working for me. Big Ken? I, I told you where I booked, and you guys booked elsewhere. Dude, I listened to Ryan. What you get not Ryan's cheap. That's on me. I also That's tried to me. save but a couple like, bucks. Yeah. You Which have, I, doesn't I everyone? Knew, I knew Ryan was staying in an Airbnb <laughs> yeah. before he left. <laughs> most, most do. It was CJ said, hey, we're booking. What, where are you guys going to stay? And so I was like, this is our flight. This is our hotel. And we start doing that. And Alondra's like, oh, I found this Airbnb. It's this and that. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to stay in an Airbnb. And it ended up being a better move for sure. But uh, I felt bad because like, you guys just took that word and went with, and I totally understand why you did. I fucked up. Ken. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, but. Ken, you got a special talent, bro. Yes. Yes, Ken, you do. Dude, I'm stretching no, straight He's up. Dude, Ken doesn't humble. get enough credit for working the angles that he does and yeah. getting us in these credit these, card points, these yada, living yada. situations of like, Kind of living above your means. Big Ken. But, but like, paying, why not? not? Paying, yeah, why not? not paying for yeah. It. Big Ken could run a course. He could sell a course kind of like Andrew Tate's, except Ken's is just showing you how to live the good life. Just a little <laughs> the bit good Enjoy finer. the finer just things. Just a little bit nicer. And it'd be called The Good Life with Ken Matthews. <laughs> how to make credit card companies pay for your lifestyle. A course. Oh, a course. Oh, chapter Look one. That. Chapter one. <laughs> oh, like, we're, we're getting ready. into it early. A course on living luxury. While not spending for it either. I think chapter one should well, not be not paying for it. Invest in Tesla. And then chapter two is buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Pump stock. No, but yeah. yeah. Pump stock. Can you like Dump. you could be a travel agent and I'm just gonna throw it out there, probably a realtor too. I <laughs> I just wanna find some background. My girlfriend wasn't out of line on not like that. <laughs> yeah, to be CJ, clear. CJ is just the first one was bad. Policy the there. first one was bad. The second one she was fine with. The second insurance. one she was fine with. We yeah. had to switch rooms because it was so noisy and she's a light sleeper. Good I save. slept like a fucking I I hit the the bed like a rock. Hey, what's up Dude, with 15 the 15 tequila shots yeah, exactly. all sleep I mean, good. Boom, you know? I could have slept on the floor. <laughs> what's up with the fight outside your door that one night? There was a yeah. fight. So we get moved to the new room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that nice of a hotel. <laughs> we moved to a new room and we're fucking sleeping. All of a sudden, she wakes me up. She's like, Get down, get down. <laughs> she thought there was going to be like gunfire. Holy crap. She like, really I didn't like trust this up, place. I'm like, What the fuck? And there's this whole commotion and we're on the bottom floor. So I like walk out and got my contacts in, none of that. And I go and open up the fucking blinds. There's like these two frat looking college kids and a dad and the girl. They're fucking freaking out at these other two dudes. And then there's like the security, the hotel security trying to like, you know, them. like inter like stop them. And the police ended up coming. <gasps> but this fucking like frat kid, like this college kid. And then there's like, so there's a dad and a mom too. And I feel like they were like the girlfriend's parents. Parents. I'm like, dude, oh, I really hope this, ki this kid, I hope boy? this, I hope this kid wasn't on vacation with his girlfriend's family because he had to have looked terrible. Ooh. No, hopefully not. But anyways, the fucking frat kid picks up this security guards, uh, walkie talkie and like threw it at the oh. ground, like spiked it. And the, the security guards, like, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> it was such a, such a mess. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alex is like, <laughs> you gonna need to bend? I'm like, baby, these guys are pussies. They're not, they don't got guns. We don't got to worry about nothing. And I'm standing there in my boxers, just like watching. from here to the, like not far at all. Like they can very clearly see me. I'm just watching. <laughs> and uh, 
the cops come and like they're like trying to hold like they're detaining like the oh my god the uh the frat looking kids the other guys were kind of they pull them off this way and the mom is like he's a criminal justice major He's a criminal justice major. <laughs> oh my god! And it god. was the funniest fucking. Yeah, you thing know to who me? else was a criminal justice major? Who? The guy that shot. Uh, the guy that murdered the four students. He was a criminal justice. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I thought that was funny because I was like, oh, yeah, he's he, never mind, guys. You got to let him off. He's a criminal <laughs> justice major. He's drunk, throwing walkie talkies, picking a fight, and I just thought it was. But funny. But he knows what he's doing. He's a criminal justice major, and I just kept saying that. Then for the rest of the day, <laughs> <laughs> I was basically just making fun of college degrees, which then Alex, you know, she maybe just got annoyed at me constantly. <laughs> he's a criminal justice major. Yeah, there's, there's, and I almost opened the door and started cracking some jokes. She's like, "Stop it! That stop it!" So uh, you yeah, know, dude. there with his phone like this. He's a criminal justice <laughs> major. Okay, there's no major that she could have. You gotta let him go. That would have made it better, right? No, you know? no. criminal Even, justice he's, major. He's going to school to be a doctor. It'd be like, okay, he just tried he's to kind of an assault idiot, me, bro. Yeah, would yeah. be like, he's going for communications. Well, he obviously isn't very good at it. Hey guys, this guy's going to college. We gotta let him go. <laughs> he's a criminal justice <laughs> major, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, going back, maybe the second hotel wasn't as nice as we thought. But yeah, speaking of criminal justice major. Is that one the the Idaho killer yeah. who also worked at a college? He was a, a, a TA. He was a TA in criminal justice yeah. classes. And then he goes and kills these people. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. Honestly, I should I should have Greta on here because she know she's I know all Alex, part of that. Dude, if I if I they all under came on your two sheet, bro. They know it. They didn't I, talk for I forty minutes. Attention. It's too much. Why do all like all the girls females right? on this planet well, and in the United States know and about Evan. this? And Evan. No, but Evan. I'm not. I'm not talking about that crime shit. I'm Evan not. falls asleep to crime junkie. He listened podcasts. to like nine yeah. Datelines on the way back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's all it was. was Dateline. Bro, I wish Evan or our girlfriends were here. And Dude, could, Evan and our girlfriends could do a whole podcast it. on. Evan's gone right now. He turns out he's just back at home on the couch, all in his blankets, laying, just crying, watching The Bachelor. <laughs> I guarantee if we called Evan, Evan's in the car right now. He's got Kleenexes. If we called ball. him, he would be listening to Dateline. Let's call him. Let's call him. Let's call him. It is crazy, though. Those those girls do love the, the crime stuff. And they were all over at our us three's house watching the Vikings game. And I was sitting there with Ken. And they were all talking about it. And that's how I kind of got filled in. But how fucking crazy. You go mm. to college and your own TA is a killer. And then he went to class the, that, the next day after killing him and talked about, like, was like, yeah, you know, like, talked about it, like, as if, not not him doing it, but was, you know, like, Greta, that, that school has got to be getting a lot of flack. But how do you know someone's, like, yeah. a killer? That's, that's that, a you pretty, know? pretty rare scenario. The world's fucked up, dude. Uh, yeah, apparently, like, the guy went to, like, the memorials and, that's like, so yeah, was, like, right. seen, like, being... Basically, like a change of attitude afterwards. Yeah, like of he was like grading went, went the papers from like, easier. Went from being like kind of an asshole to after psycho, it happened dude. was like happy and like. like See, nice. that's I what I think. Someone like that wants the publicity. Yeah, I think he wants his name all over the news. He wants his pictures all over the news. That's why he did it. No, I, I he believe. tried getting away with it, bro. Eh, yeah, but I, I mean, maybe yeah, he tried to get away with it. But like, I feel like it's like a half. You want to kill somebody, and then the other half is like you want to be famous. You'd have thought that someone that is supposedly have this criminal justice degree would at least be able to get away with that killing a little longer than like you yeah, think they, they would have been. A, there's people they, they that have killed so many, they and they're right still away. on yeah, the. They're still them. on the run. They're still like can't. There's so many unsolved murders, and this guy is like fucking trained in like how to solve them, and he still couldn't get away. Just goes to show, dude. College doesn't teach you shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> college people are stupid. <laughs> It's just, it is just ironic. I'm not saying that, though. Yeah, we shouldn't, it, I shouldn't make such light about fucking those people. It's sad. It's awful. It is. It is. But I would like to have, like, our girlfriends on here to hear them go, you, go do full, a full on. Cri- do a crime, crime episode? Yeah. You wouldn't even be able to get a word in. No, I know. They would just go off. I think it'd be kind of entertaining. We'll have a girlfriend episode. Like, circling back around to the, he's a criminal justice major. Um, <laughs> the hotel probably wasn't that fucking good. But if there was criminal justice major staying there... Shit. Maybe, Maybe it was yeah. better than Ken's. <laughs> you had to have felt like you were just watching like a movie. No, I was just sitting there with my fucking, in my underwear, sliding glass door, like half cracked, just watching. Kind of cucky, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Alex was hiding. 
<laughs> just peeping over the bed. I thought we were going to get shot by a stray bullet over at Coconut Charlie's. Um, so uh, I wasn't there for, obviously, the R6 video, but I was reading a lot of the comments, and they were like, why didn't you guys call Heavy D to come haul it out? And, you know, I obviously knew that you guys did try talking to Heavy D, and he did respond, and he was, like, down to do it. But what was the whole ordeal? He was, he was down to come helicopter the R6. Uh, <laughs> let me add some context to this. We had an R6 with a snow bike on it. We brought it 12 miles into the backcountry, into the mountains, went over like probably five really, really steep hills, like up and down, up and down. We knew after it blew up, getting out, get getting it out of there would have been like a full day ordeal. Like if, it was. If we could, <laughs> if we could do it. And um, so I was just immediately trying to find helicopters in the area to do it. I hit up one guy and he was like, yeah, I have like the helicopter, but... Uh, I have to like fit it in my schedule. And I was like, well, bro, I leave in two days. Like, I don't, I don't really have time. And the weather is like so gnarly in the mountains. It could be bluebird down low and, and blizzarding up top. So you never know that. And, and helicopter pilots do not fuck around with the weather, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's ex- extremely dangerous yeah. <laughs> to fly, to fly a helicopter in winds like that. So anyway, I hit up a couple different people. Um, both of them basically told me no. And then I hit up heavy D and I was like, Hey dude, Here's uh, the issue. Here's where it's at. Do you think that you could come in with one of your helicopters, the Black Hawk, more specifically? That'd be so badass. Mm -hmm. You can make a video bid on it or a full video. Uh, We'll put you in the video and um, obviously, like, work something out. You know, if if he was like, yeah, but it's going to be, like, this much in fuel, I would be like, yeah, yeah, we'll take care of that, no problem. But anyway, I figured he would be down for it because he does all these recovery does all these recovery videos. So he responds and he was like, dude, I'm so down. I'm waiting to hear if I can, if I can get the license to pick stuff up with a helicopter because it's specific to each helicopter and I'm waiting on my black Hawk license. So he was like, I'll call tomorrow. See if, if they can push it through. If not, like I can't Mm -hmm. really do much for you. And yeah, it must not have worked, but that would have been that would have been, been obviously so best case Ontario best. for, been cool, for dude. him coming in with a Blackhawk one, but two us not having to drag right. this thing twelve miles out yeah. of the backcountry. Like it sucked, dude. and it's it was, it's hard to it's hard to show on video how much it sucked. But like we're we're not acclimated to that elevation, <laughs> so like even and even puffing. just walking from me to Ryan through the deep snow, it's you tough. you feel it, bro. When you're, you're at, at like when you're at ten thousand feet, like that. feet, I think, and then two. This thing was 600 pounds. Yeah. Like, and, and there was no good way to pull it. If a, if a snowmobile were to break in the yeah, backcountry, it's it's sitting on two skis and a track, and you just get the track to slide, and you're good, right? Yeah. But this one was like, it would tip over. We tried every which way of, like, a toboggan underneath, the whole thing in there, the whole thing upside down, um, and there was just, like, no good way to pull it. Right. It was gnarly, though. It took like the whole... Well, how many of us, like... Ten like of us, nine guys. of us, plus the three guys that stopped and helped, seven hours yeah. to get that thing out. Yeah, it was it was it was crazy, dude. Like the podcast that my dad was on, he said, "When when you're in need, the right people show up, mm-hmm. bro." The like one Jay and Blaine just being there was like having the right people. Yeah, there. those dudes, I haven't met them, but they seem like such beauties. Oh, oh they're yeah, the best, yeah. bro. They're the the best. And, and Blaine is a full on cowboy. Like he's a ranch hand at a ranch, like the dude ain't afraid to work, you know? And he was out, he did most of the work for us. Shout out Blaine. Hell of a rider too. Hell of a rider. But he was like on his, on his knees, freaking no, glo- no gloves on tying knots. Like was it he cold had to have there? done it like 50 times. Yeah. It was windy. Like when you're at the like top how of cold, the, like, it, like colder in here or warmer. Or it, it was probably, it was probably like 20 degrees, but when you're at the top of the mountain and it's, it's just so windy, windy. it just sucks. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah I mean, if you, and then, there, and, yeah. and then the right when there. we were, we got it to, uh, we got it down this hill which was just a pain in itself getting it down a hill. And then four guys came in that were like going into the back country to go snow, uh, snowboarding. And they were like, Hey, what's going on? One of them ended up being our buddy Baker that we'd met at a trip prior. Yeah. And, uh, he pulled out his drone, documented the whole thing on his drone. So we got all that footage. Shout out Baker for that. It was amazing. And then his other buddy was like, he was there pulling the R6 up really? the mountain with us. It, it would have been a total pain to do without just like one more guy's help. Like it's truly crazy how when you're in desperate times, the right people show up. Mm-hmm. It, it was good for the content, but yeah, bro. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like it one of the hardest things I've, 
probably ever done. You know, like it's not, and it's a little bit mental too. I remember when we were like pulling it down this huge hill and it's supposed to go straight down the path. It's super huge hill. The one Evan drove the R6 up and it starts going the wrong way into like no man's land and it's getting dark. And I was like, dude, this is bad. Do no. What do we do? Do we still keep trying and just into the night? And that's exactly what we did. It was pitch black when we got back. I don't think the video probably did it justice. No. And just like, from like it's the ins- dragging it back. Cause like, I know how it probably look and especially like hearing you guys talk about it it, it almost looked easier but it w- clearly wasn't yeah, yeah i mean we literally the, at the top of the two hills we would get the stone up as far as it could go before they would get stuck and then we literally tied ropes to it and like the 10 of us just dragged it up the hill a few hundred feet it was yeah it was a deuce the importance of a team you know couldn't do that alone if you were out there with like just a couple guys to leave it no way. yeah yeah and and so many people were like Why'd you guys go in that far? <laughs> and honestly, looking back at it, just having too good of a time. No idea why we did it. Besides, just you're gonna ride it out. We were just, we we were just ha- so confident in it. We were, just, we were like, yeah. this thing's working great. It was just ripping. We were all ripping. It was the first day, and so we went back 12 miles. And and there was also a lot of comments saying like, why didn't you guys just pull the spark plugs and and uh, unhydro lock it? And I guess looking back, knowing how much work it was to get it out of there would have definitely been worth the, you know, couple hours it would have taken. But we were, like, so unconfident in our ability to wrench on that thing out in the middle of the mountains, having all the right equipment, being freezing, snowing, all these different things. We were like, that's that's going to take five hours in itself. Let's just spend seven hours and just drag mm-hmm. it out, and it's going to be a for sure thing. Yeah, yeah mostly just because we had one day, one day to get it out. Yeah. Somehow, some way. Uh, helicopter would have been better. Obviously easier on us, way cooler, and we wouldn't have uh, almost totaled out our six. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the reason that, long story short, Evan got so fucked up at the bar that night is because we were like, after that, everyone's just dripping in sweat. We finally got it back. We were like, open bar tab on us tonight, boys. <laughs> yeah, we we truly deserve it. it. Evan's like, yes, yes. <laughs> Evan was getting his drinks paid for yeah, anyways. Yeah. What's he happy with? <laughs> no, he was he just, just like, just little. an excuse to yeah. celebrate. Yeah. What What was the bar tab? Uh, like six, five, five fifty. Oh. With dinner. Yeah. So, That's actually really not as yeah, For probably yeah. like 12 people. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. But the other guys, the snowboard guys came. We were yeah. like, hey, you guys are coming. Yeah, you we're better. getting your drinks. Yeah, no, it was, awesome. a, it was a good time. It was, it was just like, dude, the mountains are gnarly, especially being from the Midwest. We don't have to deal with those kind of problems. And like, when you go out on the hill, you don't have to think about so many different things that you do when you're in the mountains. And uh, it's also obviously very dangerous out there. It's very mm-hmm. dangerous, which we've known for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's I, going into like going Ken into Bob, yeah. yeah. It seems like a good time to transition into that. So. Yeah, Ken Block, the legend Ken Block, uh, died in a snowmobiling accident <sighs> about a week ago. Yeah, a couple days before we had got, we were going to the mountains. Literally two days. Yeah, I've never felt a death like hurt me as much as that one for somebody that I'd never met. Yeah, yeah. that's well said. I'd say same. Like, I mean, it was like as soon as I read the news, sinking. Everything was sinking. I was like, and then. Also being rushed with a bunch of memories from someone I've never met. Yeah. So a bunch of legendary memories rushed It's weird because I feel I like, like we have met him. Yeah. But right? like we never, never did. And this is Ken Block's rally wheel on the wall. We've had that since the day we started the podcast. Uh, I, there's just so many things that Ken Block impacted just on our lives alone for us never meeting him. Like there's just so many like inspirations with a lot of people, though, with a all around lot the world. of people, and the dude was such a creative and marketing genius. He impacted the action spo- sports and the motorsports world more than anyone I can think of. Dude, talk about the loss of like such a legend, and especially doing something that you you know he probably was just I don't know I guess the full story, but it seems like he was just out there for a leisurely ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just having fun. You know, and out of all the other dangerous stuff he's done, you know, just a fluke thing. He had talked to people that he was close with and that we know, and and he had been telling them about how much he had found joy in snowmobiling and, like, how much of a passion it was of his and how it was one of his, like, favorite things to do. And that's why I think the most shocking 
thing was is it was like that guy lived life wide open. I think one of his mottos was, you know, like uh, go fast, take chances, stuff like that. I mean, you know, he he lived his life uh, on the edge. Definitely then, to the fullest. Yeah, to the fullest, exactly. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's just jarring to have someone who, you know, almost invented, well, he invented a lot, DC shoes. And then he also really has popularized like a YouTube motorsports auto, you know, type of content and stuff like that, a whole brand of Hoonigan. You know, I mean, he's Just revolutionized. Huge. Yeah. It was I like, would say modern media. It was like yeah. everything he touched turned to gold. Yeah. yeah. And, but, but and it wasn't for a good reason. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For a good reason because that's what I was genius. I was like all the posts coming out, I was so inspired by. Like I've never seen so many RIP posts that were that inspiring. People, or or actually thoughtful instead yeah, of just yeah. like a, you know, yeah. RIP continuing. Like, sorry. He was just yeah, he was just like I mean everyone that was like had the opportunity to work with him but there's like they're like you don't work with Ken. You or you you just are are fortunate enough to work with him mm-hmm. on his idea. Like he is just everything he touches basically turns to gold and like he had such an eye for everything and he did everything so much bigger than everyone else and so much better, but not because he wanted to be better than everyone else because he wanted to be the best. Yeah, Dude, he, he was just like so much different and you could see that through his work, obviously. And the yeah, so David, uh, one of our best friends, 509 guy, um, he, he had done a lot of stuff with with Ken and was fortunate to work with him and uh, new people in the industry. And yeah, he said every project that you got to work on with Ken was not your project. You were just helping Ken's vision come to life. Mm-hmm. Dude, I haven't hell of a life, hell of a life, man. Yeah. Hell of a life. I have, I haven't been able to stop like thinking about it. Same. And yeah, it was so frequently in my mind when you, you were know, riding when you were riding it, it, it affects, you know, your decisions fear always does but like having something so similar like that it just it was just it's like gut-wrenching it it puts like everything in perspective too of like fuck is this worth it yeah and i hate to like live in fear like that and obviously our lifestyle is is Mm -hmm. you know kind of crucial to not live in fear like that um and i don't think he did either you know I, i don't think he like just everything he did, he did to like the fullest, and and I don't think and, if he could, I I cannot put what he would think, but if I could imagine what he would want, I don't think that he would want people to live in fear of something such as snowmobiling or rally car driving or something like that. I I wouldn't imagine that he would feel that way, you know, because he wasn't that type of guy. Yeah, I saw a quote by him that somebody asked him, "Are you scared when you're when you're driving that fast?" And he said. If you're not scared, you're not driving fast enough. <laughs> Dude. It's a good answer. Straight yeah. to the point on that. But yeah, on a positive note, <clears throat> I don't I don't think we will ever stop learning from him. I don't think everyone who ever followed him will ever stop learning from him. You know, he he did so much stuff that it's something that you could study and just be happy to watch and take in. Yeah, be like, a, ev- no one will ever stop learning from him. Just that much of a legend. Yeah, there's just like certain people growing up in this era and especially in the world that we live in that are so crucial in just the development of marketing and creative. And he was definitely one of them. And man, the industry will mi- miss him immensely. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit, we even named Ken yeah, after Ken Block. Say, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about I mean, and that's impact. part of that's part that's of Ken that will kids. live with us of, yeah. of Ken Block. Yeah. I mean, literally named Ken after Ken Block. But yeah, what? Should we tell that story? I guess I mean, we've, we've kind of told? told it, I think. So basically, Ken's first car was a Subaru Impreza, like a 2008. Not a WRX. Subaru Impreza. Just hatchback. an Impreza. <laughs> and uh, he pulls up with it. It's basically a very lame economy car. But it, I mean, it was. But it drifts it, in the yeah. snow. Well, it was all wheel drive. And we, you know, we had to test that. So he pulled up, and obviously, we had, we'd been watching the Jim Connors, and we were aware of, of Subaru WRXs and STIs and all that. And that was like. Basically, our dream car at the time. So when Ken pulls up, we're like, "Holy shit, dude! Like, this, this is pretty close to like, <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty close to like the cool version of this. Like, it's it's almost there." <laughs> it's almost and then we're like, "Well, let's go see if it can drift." So we all pile in, like, I mean, five deep, maybe six, who knows? And uh, 
and I mean, we'd do this frequently. We would <laughs> go down to like gravel roads that were windy and we'd just peer pressure Ken into drifting. Because <laughs> he, he would always, with his he would always half send it at the start. And then I think we would just get on him so much that he knew the only way to just get out of it was just actually send it. And he would, he would end up doing it and he would rip like some good drifts. And <laughs> at that, driver. we're like, man, Ken is like, he's good at drifting. <laughs> like that's how we, how we looked at him, which his name at the time was Grant. And then uh, we're like, so we started to call him Ken, Ken Block, which was funny because it was like, yeah, the real Ken Block with his built Subaru WRX STI drift car machine doing all <laughs> these crazy videos, crazy drift maneuvers. And then you got Ken Matthews, <laughs> little, a, a, a small town kid still going through puberty with a Subaru Impreza, 100 horsepower, drifting down some, some gravel roads. <laughs> In our eyes, they were one and the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that and that's where oh. that too. We just wanted to be just like Ken. And yeah, like he is. Well, I think like like uh, people that have really um, inspired us. You know, obviously Ken Block, like we said, Rob Deerdick, um, Jeff Tremaine, uh, Bam Margera, Travis, Travis Pastrana, a lot of the Nitro Circus guys, Street Bike Tommy. You know, just a lot of Greg Godfrey. You know, there's just so many different people that we watched growing up and looked up to. World's going to miss them, but what a hell of a life. And, I mean, talk about a, a life worth living, you know. Talk exactly. about an impact made. Yeah, yeah. Every uh, It seems like couldn't have lived it much better. Totally. Hug your homies. Yep. <clears throat> Hug yeah. your homies. Yeah, I hate to end on, on kind of a, you know, sad note like that, but a lot of people have been commenting on our videos and – um I wanted to say something about it. Yeah. 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 I absolutely. think a lot of people were actually, I, I, I saw it too. They were asking on it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> which is cool. I, it, there was a ton before we said anything, there was overwhelming amount of comments, just like yeah. just kind of bouncing back with us. Yeah, they yeah. were big fans too. So, I mean, but on an, on a sad note for sure, but on a positive note, legends never die. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah. His, uh, he will live on forever with what he's done, you know? So, Left a good legacy, that's for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys. Should we wrap it up? Yep. yep. Yeah, we should. First podcast of 2023. In the bag. Hell yeah. We did her. Subscribe, comment, and uh, catch you guys next week. Bye. Peace.